Hi everyone, welcome to Basic Science Series. I'm your host Lokendra Kumar and uh, today what I'm planning to do is uh, I'm going to use some of the tools that are used for the primer designing and I will try to design some primers for you. This video is going to help you to understand what are primers, how primers they are designed, what is the concept of primers and why they are important, especially focusing on the genetic engineering part. So if we if we just look at the the concept of primers, we need to understand that there there are few other basic concepts. Uh, I I expect that you already know about PCR, about DNA, and amplification of the DNA. If you don't, then you don't need to worry about it because I have made some of the videos that you are seeing on your computer screen is uh, is the is the basic science series channel and recently i posted some of the videos as you're seeing on polymerase chain reaction so pcr1 pcr2 these are these are some of the uh, you know videos on polymerase chain reaction and what i'm doing in these videos is trying to make you understand the basics of polymerase chain reaction and in those i have discussed the basics of primer designing also but I thought I should make uh, another video, a more interactive video, where I can show you how you can use some of the tools that are available for primary designing. So we'll start by just exploring the web and see what are the tools that are already available, updated tools. I have used, I'm being using one of the tools with, which is primary designing. I'll explain a little bit detail about the about that specific tool. And we'll also try to explore some of the available tools. Maybe there are new tools available, right? So before I jump onto the onto the video part, I just want to show you this is the channel that I'm being uh, running, posting videos related to biosciences, uh, related to some of the basic concepts in biosciences. So you can explore the videos and uh, you can see some of the videos there are they are basically on <coughs> specifically. The fundamental topics of botany, zoology, biotechnology, microbiology, bioinformatics. Because as as you keep, you know, going deep into the research, you need to also refine your fundamentals. So as you can see, some of the some of the videos they are uh, they are on microbiology. Some of the videos there are on uh, they are on basically research articles some of the videos they are also tutorial based like on google scholar and and so on and so forth so you should watch all those videos and maybe some of the videos they will be helpful to you according according to your needs so in this particular video i will be focusing on primer designing first let me tell you that why why we design primers so there is the concept of polymerase chain reaction where you want to amplify a specific region of the DNA molecule. So to amplify that region, you need to design primers because when DNA polymerase is going to act, it requires that that site where uh, the primer is bound. Then only it can initiate the process of adding nucleotides. Because of that, you will get the double strand DNA molecule. So. I would recommend you to watch these uh, PCR videos one, two, three. They will explain what is PCR and what are the things we need. Here, I will be focusing on primer designing. As I've already told you that these are small oligonucleotide sequences that are going to be used for the amplification of the specific region of the DNA. All right, now we'll we'll just change this and use another. Um, this search engine where I'll just explore. So as you can see, I was uh, looking for this particular tool. There are uh, other tools also. I I have used this tool and uh, after designing the primers using this tool, I was able to get the PCR positive reaction. See, if you understand the concept of uh, primers, you can always design your own primer, manually design your own primer if you have the DNA sequence. So if you watch the videos, you should be able to understand the designing of the primer even manually. 
So there are few things uh, that you need to do. There are few things that you need to avoid while designing primers. So let's uh, first, you know, we should search about what are the tools available. So if we type tools available for primer design, right? You, you can always do, <coughs> sorry, some sort of search on the topic and you will you will get the information like for example you have pcr primary design tool from visual 1p primer design there is thermo fisher scientific uh, is also providing uh, primary designing tool I, i'm sure the sigma is going to provide then there is uh, this, you know there are also similar questions as you can see here uh, what is primary three tool so that means it's pretty famous that people are using and people are posting questions about it NCBA is also providing you some uh, interesting tools design, uh, regarding primary designing. In, in that in that case, you can also do the blasts, and that's very very useful. Anyways, we can we can always look into that one later. But here, I just want to go through the process of designing primers, and in that process, what I'm going to do is uh, instruct you or teach you. If you have a gene and you want to design the primer for the detection of that particular gene, uh, what are the steps you need to follow? So see here, uh, there are various tools that you can use and probably depending upon your experience, depending upon your experiment, you can use a specific tool and keep on using that particular tool which is working for you. I'm showing you the primer design uh, using primer three. So if I type primer three, Correct. You can also follow through if you are watching this video and you want to design the primer for your gene. You can, uh, you know, you can uh, follow through and get the primers for your genes. Now you can see primer three. If you click on that one, you will uh, be directed to this particular web page. Now I will first go to the bottom of this particular page because I want to show you something. So the important part in this case, whenever you are using any tool and information, you should always cite or acknowledge. So as you can see on the bottom, the acknowledgement section is there. The nice thing about this one is, um, you know, if you are using this particular tool and designing primers and utilizing this tool and you want to cite that particular tool, as you can see here, these are the format of citations that you can use and this will this will help the developers because they are spending so much time and effort on developing the software and if you are not citing and just using the tool it's not recommended but you know see the nice thing here uh, what is what is this line it says we request but do not require that use of this software be cited in the publication ads but this is this is a good practice that you should always cite uh, if you are using that particular tool and getting the results you can also read papers uh, on this particular tool and you see uh, they have also acknowledged uh, the grant that they got for developing this particular tool so this is a scientific scientifically valid tool and i have used this particular tool for my experiment i got good results now if we move uh, uh, to the top this is this is uh, the snapshot of this particular software as you can see something something this you will see also on your um, browser so right now i'm making this video in 2022 so maybe it will get you know uh, updated and the browser um, you know the user interface will look like different but at this particular point this is what we have and i'll just uh, show you some of the uh, you know steps that you will be using uh, while you're designing primer now for uh, designing a primer you need to you need a gene sequence that's the first requirement so how how we can get the gene sequence i'm just looking on the other side because i can see um, you know how the alignment is there because since i'm using my camera as uh, also the uh, browser so i want to make sure that this is aligned for that let's move on to the another tab where um, we all know that you can get sequence from various places gene sequence from various places so ncbi ncbi genes 
you can simply go in there and this is something you will see if you want to find out the gene uh, now the name of the gene will be specific to your experiment it can be anything it can be uh, a specific dna sequence that that is present in the in the in the in the genome of the organism it could be a hypothetical gene it could be a known gene so in this case if i use lhasa i've i've used this particular example so many times so i'm just going to use this uh, particular gene this is the uh, receptor gene of pseudomonas aeruginosa so as you can see here you just type the name of the gene there is another gene for example tlr so if you are working on toll-like receptor so see here tlr4 hum homo sapien tlr4 gene so i'm interested in uh, human tlr4 so maybe i have human samples and i want to detect the presence of this particular gene in those samples so it's here you can see if you click on this basically it will give the detailed information on uh, the human toll like receptor 4 gene so you can get all the information by reading these in, uh, these uh, you know specific tabs uh, as you can see here a lot of interesting information is given is where uh, this particular gene is present in the genome what is the locus of this particular gene so there are you know information is huge also you know samples the expression of this particular i guess uh, this is the data showing the expression of the gene anyway so a lot of information is there so i'm just looking for the faster sequence so f a s t a faster sequence of the gene is the uh, that nucleotide sequence that i'm interested in so i want to take that sequence uh, i guess i got the full uh, chromosome sequence that I'm not interested in that one like so <coughs> you can this is how you can explore and find out uh, the specific gene uh, that you're interested in human either uh, you can go for human either you can go for um, some other organisms because TLR4 is present in various organisms now i can i can show you another way let me let me check if that will work uniprot is the another website where you can where you can get the gene sequence i guess right it, it can give you the protein sequence that i know but i'm just trying to explore whether you can also uh, get the gene sequence uh, Okay, so here you can see transcription activator LAS R. You get the protein sequence. Um, okay, so in this case, you will only get the protein sequence. Let's see, text faster. So that's the protein sequence. Mm. Because Uniprot is the uh, data database where you can get the information of the proteins. Anyway, so. Uh, this is where you can get the protein sequence and I'm sure there is also another option to find out whether you can get the gene sequence or not if not it's okay so we can uh, we can go back to our uh, NCBI gene database and click on uh, the last R since I'm going to take this example and similar way you'll you will get that and if you click on the FASTA sequence um, uh, you will get this uh, this particular uh, complete sequence so this is the fast file and if i click on uh, the copy so this is the gene i'm interested in and i can directly paste this here so as you can see here i pasted my gene sequence in this particular tab here now you will see that pick the left primer and pick the right primer so whenever you are doing the amplification you have a gene which is uh, the double stranded dna molecule so you need to pick the primer that will bind to one side and another primer that will bind to the another side so if you go down what are the parameters that you are interested in are the are these so here you can uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see primer size you can control 
so this is another important thing depending upon what experiment you are planning but the idle size of the primer remains 15 to 20 nucleotide base pair so here you can see 18 to 20 is the you know minimum uh, to maximum is 23 optimum is 20 so it's going to use this these parameters and search the primers and you can you can expand these parameters so you can get multiple options more options here you can see minimum uh, primer temperature of melting when they are going to melt or dissociate so this is also very very important and and you can see uh, it it is around 55 to 60 here these are the default values and optimum is 59 so that is also good uh, now what you need is see here it is the range that uh, is given here so the the software is going to look for the PCR product that will range from 150 to 250 100 to 300 300 to 400 so if suppose your gene size is 1000 uh, new, uh, you know you have 1000 nucleotides in, in that particular sequence if you have that many nucleotides so y it can give you can give the software this option that pick uh, the primers that can give me the PCR product in these ranges and you can also define it so uh, for example I, I can restrict this and only select 400 to 500 so 400 to 500 it's still up you know i don't like this range it's a little bit larger so you can go for probably 200 to 400 i think that's good so it's going to look for the the primers uh, along the sequence so that the product size is within 200 to 400 range so by just just selecting these conditions i can i can quickly there are other parameters you can also see and explore but i'll just keep the default values for all of these and i'm going to click on pick primers so if i click on that one immediately primer 3 gives me the option of oligos as you can see here so i think there is something wrong in here so i'm seeing the product including region size 720 so i haven't given that one let's let's see uh, so product size range is 200 to 400 right and pcr product all these ranges uh, they are good if I again click on this one, it's giving me that's that's the best option I'm getting. Uh, let's see what other options I'm getting. So here, here you can see I'm getting the uh, you know uh, the sizes in the range of this. Although it is giving me the best uh, option, which which is going to give me uh, the product of this. Uh, so probably depending upon you know here I can see okay this is the product size so this is the product size that's why I was confused that including region size is this but the product size here is this that is I'm interested in as you can see here this is my complete sequence and primers they are binding the the primers that are here the first one and the second one first is uh, binding at this particular um, region and second one is binding at this region so it's going to amplify from here to here so basically this is the region uh, i'm going to get amplified the same way it also gave me another options there are so many options but here i'm not able to identify where they are going to bind uh, but as you can see important things to note down here are the let me zoom in a little bit so tm is very very close so i'm happy about it length is good what about the gc content gc content i can see a little bit there is a difference uh, between the gc content but probably it's going to work no hairpin loop uh, and all all those things looks like good so the, this is the complete sequence size that it is giving me and this is the amplification that i'm going to get 
anyway so here you can see and uh, this is the a schematic to show where a left primer and the light, right primer is going to bind. Then you have another options, a uh, lot of options here. One thing I can do is if I want to restrict this and give me a specific size, let's see uh, whether that can work or not. So here I want to restrict it and give me the size of maybe 200. So that will be a little bit difficult for the for the primer, uh, primer 3 software to give you a specific uh, region which is like 200 to 300. That is going to be difficult, but you can always try. Uh, if you are not getting that particular uh, specific uh, amplified region, then then you should not, uh, you know, I, I don't want you to restrict the primer 3 software to give you some crappy primers so you can give you can always give some sort of a, a range of product range so that you can uh, this software can give you uh, you know primers of high quality let's put it that way so here uh, as you can as you can see i have tried to explain you primer 3 software i have shown you that what are the things that you need to you need to uh, do to get the primer some of the things that they are there and i i don't think if you want to play around you can ch always change these things right so here i told you that if i want to have 300 that's the restrict the primer 3 to give me only 300 it is not going to give me because you you gave the value that is uh, too narrow for this software to give you the primer so it is very very important that what you are putting in the range it should be a, a broad range so that uh, primers can be searched few of the things you can uh, default values i would recommend to use all the default values for the primers mm, like primer size primer temperature of melting and all so you can always use these values and get here uh, so if I can if I can say 300 to 500 right you will see that it again gonna pick up primers and and we'll see that uh, the primers multiple options are there this is because you're giving it, it a range and based on that it can search depending upon uh, also your knowledge you can also design but you know you see there are various parameters so using computer it becomes very very easy for you to design these primers so this is how basically you design the primer and you can copy this file always have this file and send these uh, sequences so here these uh, sequences this data you can send to the companies and these uh, those companies what they're going to do is they're going to construct those oligos and they will send the oligos also with all the detailed information regarding their processing and after that you can you know design your pcr experiment and uh, i'm sure that you're going to get the results if you are using primer 3 then you should always always uh, cite the authors and acknowledge primer 3 if you are using in your project whether it is a formal or informal if you are even presenting somewhere so it is always good uh, to cite the authors or the developers great so i hope now uh, you are more familiar with primers you are more familiar how to design the primers so uh, again if you have any questions and if you are confused about some of the steps that that even you are following and you are getting errors you can always post these questions in the comment section and i will be very very happy to answer all those questions so uh, thank you and I'll see you in my next videos. Uh, I hope that you are appreciating the content. If you like the content, then please stay tuned to the channel and uh, do subscribe to the channel. Thank you and take care.